um i'm somebody that's super kind of like a little bit passionate about um katie perry and you know the lack of um acknowledgement that she gets in the industry nowadays in music and um i don't know i i ain't even pressed play on the song yet for real for real but like the katie perry promotion on twitter has just been crazy like it's been crazy and i'm not only talking about like in the female rap sector in the barb you know community but like she's spending it feels like she's spending a lot of money on um twitter campaigns and social media campaigns and i don't know like if it's going to really help her i don't think i like the direction that she's going um it seems very outdated and i see i've seen a lot of people say this and in terms of like her song lyrics and stuff like that because it's giving like this very basic like you know white feminist um you know yay women are strong vibes and it's just like that's so like 1800s and you know there's so many other different types of messages of like women empowerment and uplifting women that we like we've moved on so far far from that and it feels like Katy Perry is so behind and this is not a critique I wanted to have of her because we have been dying for Katy Perry to dominate in the 2020s but it seems like she's stuck and I don't know because it seems like if artists be like artists say like it's so hard to know what listeners want and what the consumers want and it's just like as a consumer it's all over social media people are screaming for what they want um and for they just want like all this authenticity like you know for people to be you and if i don't like that then that's okay but like i don't like the sound of the song um but also i have not you know listened to it in total here's a review on the from the guardian and and the reviews have been trashed from these publications perry's solo solo album solo return is a dated attempt at writing a feminist anthem didn't i just say that about how women really can have it all it's a song that made me feel stupider every so wait it's a song that made me feel stupider every sorry time i listen to it this garbage has six writers this is so crazy coming from a professional publication i'm dead i'm so dead i'm so sorry katie perry but like that's not what the people wanted you know i'm a little scared now her debut her spotify debut was pretty good i think she did 100 and 89,000 streams in the first hour of um last of last night right but here's the thing I was confused last night because I'm like okay it makes sense that Katie dropped at 7 p.m because 7 p.m eastern time is when Spotify resets instead of they, them resetting at um at 12 a.m they reset at 7 p.m right and that's on european time as well so it kind of makes sense for Katy perry to do that because usually like if you're a big artist and you want that attention you're having a big return like Katy, it kind of makes sense but then ice spice did the same thing she dropped at 7 p.m as well and i'm just like girl what you need to drop at 7 p.m for you need all of them streams but i don't know like and but kids here's the thing you could drop early right she got Katy perry got 189,000 streams in the first hour or something like that but like um at the end of the day until the clock strikes 12 a.m on friday morning those streams that you got from 7 p.m ain't counting for your first week chart it ain't counting for your first week sales and so that's why i'm just like why is ice dropping so early you know like it obviously i mean and so i i was like okay ice also performed today um at the wireless festival in um london and so i say that because i'm trying to figure out why Ice and Katie are dropping at 7 p.m. on a Thursday, but I figured it out. And it's because, as I said, the Spotify clock resets at 7 p.m. This is crazy how, like, it seems like Stan Twitter is running these artists because they want to have a good Spotify debut where it says, oh, they got, they debuted at number one on the global Spotify chart with 2.5 million streams, or they debuted at number 10 on US Spotify with 1.5 million streams. So that's what the artists are going for, for real, for real. So, and we saw that, right? We, we saw that happen because they both had came out with great spotify debuts um ice spice actually debuted higher than katie right ice debuted at number 126 on global spotify with 1.627 million streams in its first day around the world and it debuted at number 90 with 574k streams in the u.s okay so ice both debuted on the u.s and the spotify um sorry the u.s and the global chart um now katie perry 
she had a partial day of 196,000 as I told you and her first day she gained 2.6 million and she debuted in her first day um at 58 on the global Spotify chart with 2.257 so both of them were coming for Spotify numbers for Spotify debuts because they want to have like just good numbers on Spotify and those are things that their fan pages kind of report and stuff like that once again as I said earlier for the charts it doesn't matter until 12 a.m. on Friday but for Spotify you want to drop at their resetting of the clock their 12 a.m. which is 7 p.m. US time so since the initial recording of this video i've had some time to watch um or listen to women's world by Katy perry just so i could have a better idea of what i'm actually talking about so i heard the song and as a lot of the critics been saying um it's definitely super basic super basic lyric super basic concept and i can't believe that six people wrote on the song and honestly what was katie thinking as an extension of my earlier point this song woman's world sounds like something that should have been released when women got the right to vote back in the 18 or 1900s i can't remember um right now but yeah it's it's so basic like oh yes women and and i just watched the interview with her and she's like i hope this inspires everyone to connect with their inner feminine and she talks about how her upcoming album 143 is inspired by her new journey with motherhood and that's amazing but and she uh actually put up an instagram post that commented like satire as in like uh sh this whole music video or this song is like to be sarcastic and yeah it's a basic message of woman em empowerment but we're just being sarcastic so ha 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 laugh it off and honestly it's not cutting it for me because if you wanted to be sarcastic if you don't feel like a basic message of women empowerment is um like encompassing of what you actually want to express why don't you find your own message of women empowerment or of the divine feminine to express because that's what we're looking for right your artistry is a vessel of what you feel inside about your femininity about your exploration so i think that that's what uh, katie should do and i think and i hope that like her album encompasses more of that now are you guys looking forward to the album or will you be listening to katie now here's the other criticism the biggest criticism that she is facing and so once again this song was produced by dr luke um i'm not sure if produced or written i haven't looked at the credits but his def his, his involvement is definitely here and so a lot of people have criticisms for anybody who works with Dr. Luke, even Doja Cat. But specifically, since we're on Katie, you know, how can you have a song that's about woman empowerment and f feminism, but you're working with a known abuser in the industry? And I just heard a great video so where someone said, people who work with known abusers make it okay for men to get away with it because we all know about the allegations and about the settlement. And so, um, and shout out to Kesha um, for, you know, being so strong and, sur and a survivor and going all the way with her case and so I have to agree you know with this um criticism about working with Dr. Luke and honestly that I think the same thing could be said said about Nicki Minaj as well but um and honestly I don't want to hear no like excuses for it as well because here are the different th theories that I see a lot of people a lot of fans pouring out when it comes to Kesha and it comes to other pop girls such as Doja Cat who are signed to Dr. Luke's label which is Kemo Sabe Records and so the the uh, theory is one of the theories is is uh, Katy Perry Katy Perry Katy Perry is signed to Capitol Records is she locked in in a um a some contract with Dr. Luke that's one theory that sh why are you still working with him after all this time because uh, obviously you have access to the top writers and producers in the industry but also the second theory is are you just working with him because you want to work with him because you know that he can give you a hit and honestly I would only have sympathy or empathy if it was the first theory where she's locked into some sort of contract with him but how would we know that and so Katy Perry I think you need to do better I think you need to um get up off your ass honestly because what have you been doing all this time you should have so much to say you should just have you know such an elevated um presence in your music and a lot of people are saying oh like Katy Perry's always been cringe and you might be right on that but these days you don't get away with that stuff anymore you know and so um let's see what Katy Perry does um her song is predicted to debut in the bottom half of the chart uh, bottom 50 but I definitely believe they're gonna try to work it up um as they should so good luck to Katy Perry and let me know how you guys feel about the situation um definitely let me know how you feel about the sound direction that she's taking and um the content how 
how do you really feel about the feminist message and also with this Dr. Luke situation? What does Katy Perry need to do? Because after how many years of not putting out an album, this is quite disappointing. Anyway, thank you guys for listening until the end. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.